Communism's indispensable instinct, terror. Anarchy and terror are indispensable tools for Marxism and Communism. Marx and Engels, the founders of Communism, personally advocated violence and terror. Terror became an inseparable part of the Communist ideology with Lenin, who put Marx's theory into practice. The words of Lenin make that very clear. In principle, we have never rejected and cannot reject terror. When people charge us with harshness, we wonder how they can forget the rudiments of Marxism. Rivers of blood were spilled in Russia, China, Korea, Burma, and Cuba because of their communist ideologies. Millions lost their lives, and many more were crippled. In the 20th century alone, 120 million people, men, women, children, the young, even babies and toddlers, lost their lives because of this cold, harsh, and savage ideology known as communism. And these are just the official figures. The real numbers of those who died from communist depression are much higher. Even those who survived lived in a constant state of fear because the communist ideology regarded terror as an indispensable tool and obliged its followers to commit to it. For example, this is how Lenin taught his communist comrades the need to commit acts of terror against the military and the police. One, by leading the mass. Two, by attacking, whenever a favorable opportunity presents itself, policemen, and seizing their arms. Three, by rescuing the arrested or injured, when there are only a few police about. Four, by getting onto the roofs or upper stories of houses, etc., and showering stones or pouring boiling water on the troops, etc. To launch attacks under favorable circumstances is not only every revolutionary's right, but his plain duty. The killing of spies, policemen, gendarmes, the blowing up of police stations, the liberation of prisoners, the seizure of government funds for the needs of the uprising. Every detachment of the revolutionary army must be ready to start such operations at a moment's notice. The propagandists must supply each group with brief and simple recipes for making bombs. Squads must at once begin military training by launching operations immediately at once. Some may at once undertake to kill a spy or blow up a police station, others to raid a bank to confiscate funds for the insurrection. When Lenin spoke at a workers' meeting, he would describe how indispensable terror was to their cause in the most blatantly horrifying terms. We can't expect to get anywhere unless we resort to terrorism. Speculators must be shot on the spot. Lenin himself penned the following lines. We are not at all opposed to political killing. Only in direct, immediate connection with the mass movement can and must individual terrorist acts be of value. As we have seen, Communism commands death and destruction, the inflicting of fear, alarm and terror, and attacking and killing the troops and police officers of one's own country without so much as batting an eye. Under this system, human emotions such as compassion, pity and conscience are annihilated. It expects people to behave as animals in the same way that a wild animal will fight to the death with members of its own species for food or territory. Communism is based on Darwinism, and Darwinism teaches people that they are simply a kind of animal and that they must fight to survive in the same way that animals do. The urge to shed blood is quite clear when one looks at communist publications. In the Bolshevik newspaper, Krasnaya Gazeta, Lenin advocates the drowning of all of Russia in blood. We will turn our hearts into steel, which we will temper in the fire of suffering and the blood of fighters for freedom. We will make our hearts cruel, hard, and immovable, so that no mercy will enter them, and so that they will not quiver at the sight of a sea of enemy blood. Without mercy, without sparing, we will kill our enemies in scores of hundreds. Let them be thousands. Let them drown themselves in their own blood. For the blood of Lenin and Uritsky, Zinoviev and Volodarsky, let there be floods of the blood of the bourgeois. More blood as much as possible. The writings and statements of almost all communist leaders, not just Lenin, make it abundantly clear that terror is an inseparable element of the communist ideology. For example, 
Felix Dorzhinsky, a communist leader of his era and the first chief of the notorious secret police, the Cheka, said this in an interview. We stand for organized terror. There should be frankly admitted, terror is an absolute necessity during times of revolution. Trotsky, who was initially rejected by the Bolsheviks for not being sufficiently cruel and not seeking to shed blood in the same way as they did, also admitted there could be no communism without terror. But the revolution does require of the revolutionary class that it should attain its ends by all means at its disposal, if necessary by an armed rising, if required, by terrorism. Mao Zedong, the notorious dictator personally responsible for the deaths of more than 60 million people, describes how communism cannot be espoused in the absence of violence. A revolution is an insurrection, an act of violence by which one class overthrows another. In Turkey today, the PKK, a Marxist-Leninist, Stalinist communist organization, is employing the same tools used by these bloodthirsty leaders. Under the influence of the Darwinian indoctrination that regards life as a battleground, these separatist militants are capable of slaughtering babies, the elderly and innocent people without a second thought. They martyr our troops and police and resort to all forms of terror. Since they do not regard themselves and others as entities created by God in possession of a soul, a mind and a conscience, they are capable of treating other people in the way that animals treat other animals. This scourge can only come to a complete end through the elimination of the foundation of that violence. In other words, Darwinism. A wide-ranging dissemination of scientific, anti-communist and anti-Darwinist information is essential against a communist separatist movement that gathers support through communist propaganda.